hit a seven-month high. Dow, S&P, and Nasdaq futures are all up about four-tenths percent. So is the FT100 in London. So is the Nikkei, another four-tenths percent there. Coincidence? Absolutely. Do you enjoy the music we play between stories? Visit the Marketplace Music section to browse playlists for all of our programs and to buy those songs on Amazon. A percentage of each purchase goes towards supporting our programs. Find more online at marketplace.org slash music. Some colleges in the South are unhappy with the U.S. military. The Pentagon wants to put more of its ROTC recruiting programs into more urban areas and is pulling out of some rural southern campuses. The Reserve Officers Training Corps offers scholarships in return for later military service. Some students pick a college because of their ROTC programs and could find themselves without the stipend that they were depending on to pay for school. New York Times reporter Alan Blinder has been writing about this. Mr. Blinder, good morning. Good morning. Why is the Army doing this, phasing out ROTC programs at some of these colleges in the rural South? Well, they uh, are frankly trying to recalibrate their recruiting footprint around the country. They uh, focused on programs that weren't meeting a minimum threshold for officer production, and the Army believes that the money and uh, manpower could be spent better elsewhere. The shift seems to be toward urban areas? Uh, Areas that we know they're targeting include uh, Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago, places where they feel like they've got a big recruiting population, but where they feel they're underrepresented anyway. The students who are going to schools that may not have an ROTC program in a couple years, some of them feel left high and dry. Some of them do. Some of them are transferring to other universities that have ROTC programs. Others will go a route that allows them to get a direct commission in the Army if they have certain educational training, like a nursing degree. And there are some others who will probably just abandon their Army plans entirely and opt for a life as a civilian. Now, Alan, I've done coverage in the past that ROTC enrollment fluctuates with the economy. Where's enrollment at the moment? Enrollment is hovering right around 33,000, which is somewhere um, roughly in the middle of where it's been in the last decade or so. You had uh, some significant drop-off while the United States was engaged in conflict abroad. And then you saw a rise uh, as those conflicts came to a conclusion and as the economy worsened. The news that the RTC program will go at some of these colleges is not sitting well with the colleges. Should we expect a fight? Well, the colleges are doing everything they can to push back against the Pentagon. They've enlisted members of Congress, and in a lot of cases, these schools are also asking very powerful graduates to get involved. At Tennessee Tech, they've asked Carl Steiner, who is a retired four-star general who used to run Special Operations Command, to get involved. And when I reached him uh, recently, he was sitting at his computer writing an email trying to rouse support. We'll, we'll see what happens. Alan Blinder, New York Times, Atlanta, thank you very much. My pleasure. And video of the UC Davis policeman vigorously spraying Occupy protesters two years ago became an Internet meme. Now there's word the officer will receive $38,000 in workers' comp money for the stress-related problems that resulted from the incident. The Davis Enterprise is reporting that the officer's compensation is $8,000 more than the $30,000 each of 21 protesters got for the wrongful spraying or arrest. The newspaper said the officer was eventually fired after eight months of paid leave. In New York, I'm David Brancaccio with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media. Now with the titty bear, I really enjoy traveling again. Did you get that camera guy? He doesn't get it. Congressional hearings into Obamacare website problems. We need to get to the bottom of it. Ranking eighth graders in math and science. The U.S. does better than you might think. And a World Series blowout. Red Sox win game one. Good morning, I'm Peter King with a CBS World News Roundup. More than three weeks after it went online, the Obamacare enrollment website has been called troubled at best, a disaster at worst. The White House says it will extend the enrollment deadline by six weeks, and this morning there will be a congressional hearing to sort it all out. The main contractors say the Obama administration is just as responsible as they are for the problems. CBS's Bob Fuss is on Capitol Hill. Four contractors for the Troubled Health Exchange website will be questioned, and Pennsylvania Republican Tim Murphy, who's led the investigation, says they have a lot to answer for. And all told, more than half a billion dollars was spent 
on a website that just doesn't work. He wants the whole Obamacare sign-up system put on hold until they get answers. But like almost all other House Republicans, has consistently voted to repeal this health law and not let anyone sign up for it. Democrats on the committee support the law, but are furious about the website problems. Bob Fuzz, CBS News, Capitol Hill. It has the appearance of conflict of interest. Doctors who own major interests in companies that manufacture medical devices for their patients. CBS's Jeff Glor. The issue here is what's called physician-owned distributorships. And these are companies that doctors actually own a stake of. And the concern from many is that if a doctor owns a stake in a company, they'll be more encouraged to use that equipment in patients and to put more hardware in than might be necessary. Those companies supply a sixth of spinal implants used in the U.S. A Health and Human Services Inspector General's report being released today says hospitals served by those companies average 28 percent more spine surgeries than other hospitals. There are yet more reports of U.S. spying on some of its closest allies. The latest involves Germany's leader. CBS News correspondent Peter Mayer is live at the White House. Peter, what's she saying and how's the White House responding? Well, German Chancellor Merkel is obviously still seething over allegations that U.S. spy agencies may have snooped on her phone calls, despite President Obama's personal assurance it's not happening now. On CBS This Morning, former White House Chief of Staff Bill Daly assessed the fallout. It is very damaging. There's no question that some of our best friends in the world are now wondering whether or not we were t- not only tapping their leaders, but we were using the information uh, in, in negotiations and discussions. This is far from over. Peter, the German foreign ministry has summoned the U.S. ambassador in to discuss the controversy. Pakistan has publicly been outraged by the U.S. uh, or by the use of uh, American military drones, but it may all be for show. The Washington Post reports top Pakistani officials have actually endorsed the program for years, getting regular classified briefings on strikes and casualty counts from the U.S. The Post cites secret Pakistani diplomatic memos and CIA documents. How well are American 8th graders doing in math and science? A new report compares their results with those from students in other countries. CBS's Heather Bosch is here live. And Heather, what's the verdict? Well, there is reason to be optimistic. When you look at our 8th graders, on average... Uh, in math and science. Actually, many of our states are doing quite well. Jack Buckley with the National Center for Education Statistics. Its study shows students in most states perform above the international average in math and science. The highest ranking state is Massachusetts, followed by Vermont, Minnesota, and New Jersey. However, several Asian countries had more students performing at the highest levels in math and science. He says those are the young people who will end up being leaders in education and industry, Peter. In Danvers, Massachusetts, a Vigil for Colleen Ritzer, the 24-year-old teacher murdered on Tuesday. Her students are stunned. She was one of the nicest teachers at Danvers. Always went out of her way to talk to you. Always just saying hi to everybody. It was just, it's just a real tragedy. Police have arrested a 14-year-old student, but haven't said why they think he killed her. Most parents tell their children don't play with guns, but at a Chino, California elementary school, three kids were hurt after a student pulled the trigger of an assault weapon that was mounted on a police motorcycle during an anti-drug assembly. The department says it'll remove those weapons from cycles during future school events. Kennedy cousin Michael Skakel has been jailed since 2002 for killing his neighbor when they were teenagers. But now he's been granted a new trial. CBS News senior legal analyst Andrew Cohen. The ruling from this Connecticut judge is scathing towards Skakel's former attorney, Mickey Sherman. He called the lawyer's work at trial fatal to a constitutionally adequate defense, but prosecutors will appeal, and appellate courts often take a more cramped view of these sorts of ineffective assistance of counsel claims. 15-year-old Martha Moxley was murdered in 1975. It was 25 years before Skakel was arrested. At the World Series, a reversed call in the first inning of the first game on Fox. They're going to say out. Oh, I don't think so, Joe. I don't either. I think the Cardinals got a huge break. Umpires ruled that Cardinals shortstop Pete Cosma's glove deflected a throw and the runner was safe. And that was only the start. CBS's Steve Futterman. It was a one-sided World Series opener. The Red Sox took advantage of costly St. Louis errors, scoring three runs in the first and two more in the second, finally winning the opener 8-1. to one. The Red Sox Shane Victorino happy to get the win but says the series is far from over. Game one is definitely important, but hey, not the end. St. Louis manager Mike Matheny said the Cardinals were embarrassed by their sloppy play. That is not the kind of team that we've been all season. In nine of the last ten seasons, the team that wins game one goes on to win the series. Steve Futterman, CBS News at the World Series in Boston. 
Well into football season, CBS's Jim Shenevy reports that many families are thinking twice before letting their kids play. A new Marist poll suggests threat of injury is taking a big toll on youth football. 35% of parents with sons are less likely to allow their sons to play football because of the reported link between concussions from football and long-term brain trauma. Dr. Keith Strudler headed up the poll sponsored by HBO Real Sports. The survey results suggest fewer kids are playing football from Pop Warner all the way through high school. Jim Mishenevy, CBS News. Career Builder is out with its annual list of popular excuses for calling in sick. The company's Jennifer Grass says we're not always using sick time for that purpose. 30% said they've gone to work sick because they wanted to save their sick days for when they're feeling well. Among the more unusual excuses. We heard everything from my false teeth flew out the window while I was driving down the highway. There was another person that said, you know, I quit smoking. I'm really grouchy. I probably shouldn't come in today. There was another employee that claimed there um, was a swarm of bees that surrounded his vehicle. Anyone who flies low-cost carrier Spirit Airlines can expect to pay for things like carry-on luggage and seat selection, but they also expect that their planes will fly reasonably on time. In Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Spirit flights were delayed by hours yesterday and last night. WFOR-TV's Gabby Fleischman says many passengers are still stuck there. Passengers are telling me that the airline is doing nothing. They said they've been given a couple $7 food vouchers, and they have not been given their luggage back, so they can't even really leave if they wanted to. Spirit says the delays were due to maintenance checks on its planes after an engine failure last week. A spokeswoman says the average delay was 45 minutes, but some delays were, quote, significant. Funeral services today in the Tampa Bay area for Florida Congressman Bill Young, who died last week. Young served 43 years in the House. Speaker John Boehner is expected to deliver the eulogy. Young's widow has asked some political opponents to stay away. And that's the World News Roundup for Thursday, October 24th, 2013. I'm Peter King, CBS News. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants! And a in yellow and porous is he? SpongeBob SquarePants! If not a nonsense, be something you wish. Welcome back to Studio 4 on this uh, Thursday morning, the 24th day of October 2013. And yours truly, Joe Hafter, slowly waking up on this edition of First Cup. And uh, still to come, I'll have the song of the day, what's on TV tonight, as well as uh, popular tweets of the day coming up in just a moment. Right now, though, it's time for News of the Weird. And the USS Forrestal, the Navy's first supercarrier, was recently sold to a Brownsville, Texas scrap company. Get this, for just one cent. One lousy penny. Boy, I would love to be that scrap company. Can you imagine? That would, that would raise the profits a whole lot. Well, it seems that the uh, aircraft carrier, which was decommissioned in 1993, uh, has been out of service for 20 years, obviously. Obviously, It was first launched in 1954. The scrap company's offer was based on how much it could net from the sale of the metal from the ship. The Navy offered to donate the ship as a monument or museum, but there were no interested organizations. So it was sold for a penny. Wow. Boy, the government really knows how to make money, don't they? And that's the uh, news of the weird for today. Now let's take a look at popular tweets of the day, shall we? And you can always follow me on Twitter. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How quaint. And take a look at popular tweets of the day according to a new Gallup poll. 58% of U.S. citizens are in favor of legalizing pot for recreational use. It would be cool if you did, man. The latest numbers are considered a big win for uh, marijuana advocates who are pushing for its legalization. 
So I've gone to the Twitter to see what people had uh, thought about this, and here's some of the results that I found. Bucky Isotope writes, 